Your users love your app. They store all of their content there. They share things. They literally squeal in anticipation and delight when there's an update available. They are all your number one fan. But then they get a new phone and they use Tap and Go to transfer their accounts and apps across. They open up your app, but nothing's there. Well, in Android M, we've turned on full app data backup for apps, targeting the end release and above. My name is Matthew, working on Play Services Backup and Restore, and I'm going to walk you through these changes. Well, not to put words in your brain, but you might be thinking that this kind of is already handled by data syncing frameworks. There's Pass, there's Firebase, there's the Android Sync Framework, the Google Play Games API. It's a long list. But any data fetching is going to be tied to some sort of user account, requiring a login before you can start pulling down their data. Backup and Restore still requires an account, but the account is the user's Google account and is set up elsewhere. By the time the user enters your app, their data is already there. And then they still need to consume any welcome screens and re-accept any terms of service. When an app is restored from an ancestral device, all of the persisted user state that existed on the previous device will now exist on the new one as an exact duplicate. If you're smart about what configuration you persist and how you persist it, you can drastically shorten your app's out-of-box flow. The most powerful part of this is that once you build your app against the MSDK, it will just start backing up. Let's pause for a moment to let this sink in. It means that with no further effort, as soon as you download the MDeveloper SDK and rebuild your app against it, your app will start backing up. Now, backups are run at most once a day and use the job schedule APIs that we introduced in Lollipop to only run when the device is idle, unconnected to Wi-Fi and power. Your app has no control over scheduling backups. The backed up data is encrypted at rest in the user's Google Drive account and is not counted against their drive quota. For now, we've capped the data size at about 25 megabytes per app per user. Be careful, if your app hits this limit, it will stop backing up. Now, a restore will happen at install time, whenever an app is installed and we have some corresponding data present in Drive. The restore is not restricted to apps installed via the Play Store. Side loading an app, for example, or using a third party app store will still initiate a restore. Whatever connection is used for the app download is also going to be used to download this extra restore data. All right, we've covered that all apps targeting Android M will automatically start backing up with no further effort from anybody. Let's cover how to opt out. If you don't want to use the feature, you can add the application attributes allow backup false to your manifest. OK, now that all the lamos have left to go disable backups, let's get to the cool stuff. For example, what not to backup. It's not a good idea to backup certain pieces of data, for example, user credentials or device-specific tokens. Let's look at Google Cloud Messaging. When you register your app with the Cloud Messaging backend, you get a device-specific ID that your server uses to push notifications to that specific device. If you try to restore this ID onto another device, it just would not work. Or rather, it would work, but your server would just not be able to send any messages to this new device. So you really have to be careful. Think about the data that you're persisting to disk, and think about how well it carries over to a completely different device. We've made it easy to exclude data that you might not want stored in the cloud, or that doesn't make sense to restore across devices. You add a manifest flag that points to an XML resource file. The XML file is easy. It's a series of include and exclude tags, each of which specifies either a directory or a file, along with the domain that the data belongs to. An exclude tag is how you would specify that you want to ignore a specific file or directory. By default, the backup set is produced reductively. That means you start with everything, and then you strip things out with excludes. Take this example. This is saying that I want to backup my entire data directory, except for the device info database. Now, in some cases, it's kind of inconvenient to have to enumerate every single thing you want to exclude. So there's also an include tag. Specifying an include changes the default behavior from backup everything except what if I explicitly took out to only backup the data I ask you to. Take this example. The only file that will be backed up is my important file.txt. In other words, having an include tag changes the backup logic from being reductive, where you start with everything and remove, to constructive, where you start with nothing and then you add. Next, we'll talk about exactly what these domains are. Anytime an app creates a file, 
It doesn't go into the app's root directory, but rather it goes into some files directory underneath. Similarly, when you create a shared preferences object, it's persisted as an XML file under some shared prefs directory. Same is true for databases and externally mounted storage. Finally, you can also manipulate data that resides within the root directory of the app. When specifying the data that you want to include or exclude, you have to tell the backup manager what domain it is, or, put equivalently, which directory to look in. All righty. So hopefully at this point you're thinking, this is so cool, and setting it up appears pretty simple, but it's a little opaque. How do I know my data is properly being backed up? What happens if Maximum is badly formed? How can I assure myself that this thing is actually working? We have some more resources to help. I won't get into the details in this video, but if you're interested, look at the video description for instructions to turn on Drubos logging within your app, as well as how to manually initiate a backup and restore, and a pointer to some sample code. Okay, this has been fun, and with luck, if at any point during this video you're worried about being backed up, you're now sitting more comfortably. <laughs>